Today I'm going to give you a complete tutorial on how to use every available feature of Leonardo AI. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. If you don't know Leonardo AI, it is a stable diffusion based online image generator. It stands out from the crowd quite a bit, as you'll be able to tell by its many features. So let's get right into it. To get started, we'll head over to leonardo.ai and we'll need to create an account. After you created the account, you'll be directed onto the main page. And here we have 150 tokens available per day. It resets every 24 hours. So that is enough to create about 10 to 15, maybe 20 images, depending on how much how many features you want to use and so let's start from the first feature of uh, leonardo ai which is image generation the most basic feature and we'll start from the left hand side we have the number of images you want to generate we can choose from one to eight but here's something very important to keep in mind the more images you want to generate at once the more it will charge you the more tokens it will charge you so if you want to generate one image it it will be from three tokens if you want to generate four images at once it can be 11 tokens so be very careful uh, with the amount of images you want to generate at once if you are constrained with the tokens here we have a bunch of new features that Leonardo has added, which is photo reel. Photo reel is a new feature. Uh, it is basically a photorealistic pipeline that will help you get very lifelike portraits, realistic photos, and it requires alchemy to work. And so you might ask, what is alchemy? Alchemy is a powerful image generator that uh, is only available to paid plans at the moment and it includes features like prompt magic creative control alchemy refiner uh, and the photorealistic mode another feature is prompt magic which it basically increases the prompt adherence and the image fidelity and it can increase the output of any chosen model so think of it as kind of like an enhancer of whatever model you're using it can generate a better output but it takes also more GPU and so it will take more tokens for a generation then heading on down we have the image dimensions and uh, we can choose from one of the presets that we have available here however we have to keep in mind that whenever when we when we're choosing the image dimensions we need to pay attention to which model we're using and here as we can see it we have a warning that the selected model that we're using is trained on certain dimensions so it will give you better results if you use the dimensions that the model was trained on in this case the model was trained on 1024 by 768 so if we choose that the warning is gone then uh, we can also change the image dimensions manually by choosing the width choosing the height or we can head over to advanced controls and choose from here heading downwards we have the guidance scale the guidance scale is basically how literate it will take your prompt so if you the, more, the higher it is, the more literate it will take the prompt, and the lower it is, the, the more experimental it will be. So the sweet spot is around 6 to 8. It is not recommended to go very low, because then you may, might get results that are very abstract and they are not very uh, coherent with the prompt you're giving it. If you go too high, it may take the prompt too literary and it may produce results that are not ideal. So as I said, it's best to keep the guidance scale at around 6 to 8. Then we have tilting, which is a feature that is good for textures and backgrounds. So uh, 
it it is used mainly for that and then we have image inputs that have been moved to the image guidance tab which we'll get to in a second coming back to the top we have the prompt box we have the models we can choose from this is something that leonardo ai is really good at it stands from the crowd because you can select a already fine-tuned model some of them include the leonardo models like leonardo kino xl vision xl leonardo diffusion but we can also use models that are not from leonardo for example we have stable diffusion 2.1 or 1.5 and the models are basically the styles in which you want to generate the image so they are trained models that perform best at a certain style of an image so we can see there's ones that are very realistic there's ones that are animated there's ones that resemble vintage photography pixel art more of a fantasy style and so there's plenty of different ones you can choose from and that is something that leonardo re does really well that not many other ai image generators have which is the sheer amount of different models you have on one platform you don't need to install anything locally it's all available at your fingertips right here so then we have the choice of choosing either the leonardo style or, or none I recommend going with the Leonardo style if you're using any of the Leonardo models. And then right next to it we have elements, which is a brand new feature. They are basically low rank adaptation models, which you can use in any image and increase the amount of the style you want to add to a certain image. So for example, you can use a bit of a superhero SDXL element and choose the weight of how much is going to impact the image. You can choose a element of digital art style, choose the weight and you'll get different results. And there are plenty of pretty cool themes you can choose from, elements as the Leonardo calls it. For now you can choose up to two elements safely for the generation. If you choose more than two it gives you a warning that the outcomes might be unexpected so uh, they recommend using a low weight settings if you're choosing more than two elements and then right next to elements we have negative prompts so if we do not want something in our image we can just type it in right before we generate it is pretty self-explanatory however be careful not to use too many negative prompts because that can cause some unexpected results and you may lose a bunch of tokens on on generations as such and then we have image guidance with which is basically a way of inputting your custom image and uh, you can choose how inspired by that image the generation should be so the higher the strength the more it will resemble the image you put in so let's say we would like to add an element of tunes and anime we'll give that a strength of 1.2 we'll choose the aspect ratio to match our model we will go with leonardo diffusion excel and we'll choose the strength to 0.5 the prompt we'll give it is to make it a cartoon we can go ahead and generate and as we can see we didn't get a, a great outcome here but you get the idea and then next to image guidance we have prompt generation which is a pretty good tool for coming up with prompts so let's say we want to generate a medieval king sitting on a throne that is realistic we'll ask it to ideate it will give us some more detailed prompts realistic rendering of a medieval king on his throne captures every detail from ornate embroidery okay so i like this prompt and we can go ahead and generate it right away. Oh, we have to turn off the image guidance before. That is pretty good, but uh, I forgot to turn off the, the element of uh, tune and anime. So instead of that, we can choose a different model and see if we can get a more realistic 
look so we can try a prompt like samurai cyberpunk realistic i like this one a lot so we can try to generate it we'll choose a different model for this let's go with dream shaper v7 let's remember to change the image dimensions and let's hit generate and it came up with something like this I'm pretty happy with that, that looks pretty good. Okay, next feature we will cover is the real-time canvas, which allows you to sketch stuff in real-time. So we can start with putting in a prompt of uh, medieval and draw a little face and see if it if it recognizes and you can see that it changes in real time with each stroke we can also change the guidance here so the more guidance it has the more uh, the more it will resemble the prompt that we put in we can also switch the output to input so we bring it over here that way and we can edit it from here next up we have canvas editor and so with this tool, we are basically able to tweak the previously generated the previously generated images. So we can go ahead and select the sketch tool, for example. We can draw a something that resembles a sword. Give it a prompt at a sword. And it tried. <laughs> it didn't go quite well but uh, we can we can let it slide then with this tool we can basically cover stuff up so let's say we would like to get rid of this uh, purple thing we can simply select it and say remove and after some time it will get rid of it basically then next up we have motion which is uh, also a pretty new feature. You can add motion to your pictures. So let's go with a generation that we already have. I will choose this one. We can choose the motion strength to five and let's see what it comes up with. All of the generations that you make will be shown in the generation history. So you can also see which model you use to create the generation you can see if it's motion or if it's a uh, image and here we have our motion generation of the of a tokyo city downtown tokyo city tokyo city as you can see it added a little pan effect which looks pretty cool it actually looks pretty realistic other than that the fact that the person in the original generation was not looking quite real uh, this is quite a good movement it added so then the last feature that is also brand new is real-time generation as we type leonardo will come up with stuff so let's go with a frog sitting on a rock then we can say something like holding a starbucks coffee in space there we go and as you can see the image changes in real time in an astronaut suit yep with a rocket behind it launching behind it it is not perfect, but you can see what you can do with it. Then we can also add different elements. We can add it to be more animated. And as you can see, it all changes in real time. And then once you like the result, you can click creative upscale, which will make the image of a higher resolution. And here we have our frog. As we can see the quality is pretty good, but if we want to make it even higher quality, we can go ahead and upscale it. We can choose the refiner strength, which is basically how many times it will look at the image while upscaling it. We can choose a medium and try to upscale. And I think the quality actually got worse from this one. We can choose smooth mode. What smooth mode will basically do is, uh, as you can see, it made the hands a bit more realistic. 
and uh, it works on all the things that AI sometimes gets wrong, which are like the hands, the faces, uh, but it may impact the fine details, so it may make it less detailed. And that's about it. I think we've covered pretty much everything. If you have any more questions, then leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.